Let's talk about right triangles. Now, you'll learn a lot of different things in geometry, but one of the most important things that you'll learn about is the right triangle. So in this video, I'm going to do a quick review of what a right triangle is and some important formulas to keep in mind about right triangles. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, come on over to my site, tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so just a quick pop quiz. What is a right triangle? So if you know the answer to that, put that into the comment section. But uh, let's get into a quick review about right triangles right now. So what is a right triangle? Well, clearly it's some sort of triangle. So let's uh, just go ahead and define what a triangle is in geometry before we talk about right triangles. So the technical definition of a triangle in geometry is a three-sided polygon. So we need to define what a polygon is real quick. Effectively, you can kind of think of a polygon as figures that we can construct from straight line segments. So here we have a straight line, here's a straight line, and here's a straight line. We can kind of put all these line segments together and form a triangle. Now, if I had a line segment like this, another one like so, and another one like so, well, maybe we can construct a figure that looks like this. This is not a polygon. So we're talking about a uh, kind of closed figure like so, where we have vertices. Now, of course, I can go deeper into this, but you just need to know that a triangle is a three-sided polygon. But uh, before I, I tell you what a right triangle is, let's take a look at another uh, type of polygon, and that is a four-sided polygon, and that is called a quadrilateral. Okay, so here are four line segments. We put them together like so, and now we have a quadrilateral. Now, uh, when we're talking about polygons, there's all different types of subclasses of polygons. So, for example, when we're talking about quadrilaterals, we can have a parallelogram, we can have a trapezoid, we can have a rhombus, etc., etc. So, same idea when we're talking about triangles. Okay, so again, a triangle, any triangle, is a three sided polygon. Okay, so now let's define what a right triangle is. So a right triangle is a triangle where one of the sides is exactly 90 degrees. Okay, so if you answer this, uh, or if you told me in the comment section with my little pop quiz question, what is a right triangle? If you said uh, it's a, a triangle with one of the angles is 90 degrees, well, that is fantastic. You definitely get a nice little happy face and an A plus on that little pop quiz. All right, so the whole purpose of this video is just to quickly review and define not only what a right triangle is, but why they're so important. Okay, so how do we know we are dealing with a right triangle? Well, effectively, 90 degrees looks like this. It's like the square or the uh, angle of a perfect square corner. All right, so this looks like 90 degrees, but we don't really know exactly or precisely that it uh, does this angle right here, excuse me, that this angle right there is 90 degrees unless we define it as such. So the way we do that in geometry is to put this little notation like so. It's like a little box in the corner of this angle. This indicates that this is 90 degrees. We could do this more explicitly by just putting 90 degrees down like so, but uh, you rarely kind of see that uh, in terms of defining a right triangle. So when you are dealing with a triangle, that has a little square in the corner like so, that means that uh, that angle there is 90 degrees. Okay, so that is what a right triangle is. It's a triangle that uh, one of the angles is 90 degrees. Now, before we go into other things about right triangles, another property about all triangles is that the sum of all the angles in a triangle is always 180 degrees. So if you add up this angle, this angle, and this angle, irrespective if this is 90 degrees or not, you're always going to get 180 degrees. Okay, so that is what a right triangle is. And again, this other property about the sum of the angles always being 180 degrees, that's true irrespective of what type of triangle you're dealing with. 
Now let's talk about some really important properties of right triangles. Now the most important thing about right triangles is that we can use a special formula to find the lengths of a right triangle. Now I'll talk more about that in just one second, but let me kind of go back to the bigger properties of triangles. So this is an actual right triangle. It has sides three, four, and five. Now, how can we know for sure that this is a triangle? Okay, now you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, what are you talking about? This is a triangle. It certainly looks like a triangle. Well, let's just kind of mess around with the sides here for a second. And we'll keep this as five, and maybe we'll make this one and this three. So could we have a triangle with lengths one, three, and five? Okay, so if you know the answer to that question, put that into the comment section. But the answer is no. Okay, this is not a triangle. So if I had a line segment of one and another line segment of five, let's say that we're talking about inches, and another line segment of three, you cannot build a triangle. All right, so if you have five, three, and one, you might end up with something like this. Okay, now why is that? Well, this is something called the triangle inequality. And that uh, basically states that any two lengths of a triangle, if you add them together, will always be greater than the other side. So for example here, five plus three, well, of course that's eight, that's greater, greater than one. Now over here, we can have five plus one. Five plus one, is that greater than three? Yes, that works out, so uh, six is greater than three. But we have a problem right here. Okay, so three plus one, that is not greater than five. Okay, so when you um, have a situation where when you add up two sides of a triangle, of course, this can be any triangle. It doesn't have to be a right triangle, but if those two sides are not greater than that third side, well, this is not an actual triangle. It's something else. So let's go back to our lovely uh, right triangle. And indeed, it is a right triangle. So this would be three, four, five. And let's just kind of run through this test here real quick. So five plus three. Is that greater than four? Yes, that's uh, good. Five plus four, is that greater than three? That's true. And then three plus four, is that greater than five? Yes, that's true as well. Okay, so I'm giving you a lot of bonus uh, concepts about triangles because I want you to uh, really, you know, walk away from this video knowing a lot about not only triangles, but specifically right triangles. Okay, so we're dealing with a right triangle and this is a nice, uh, what we call a Pythagorean uh, triplet, three, four, five. Now I just said a fancy word there, and that is Pythagorean. Okay, so we're talking about something called the Pythagorean theorem. And this is probably the number one reason why you want to know if a triangle is a right triangle, is this formula right here. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. And in geometry or mathematics, we would call this type of formula a theorem. So let's get into the Pythagorean theorem right now. And this is really what makes right triangles so important. Now, before we continue on, if you want to get better at math, you definitely can. But the key is to find a teacher that gives you clear and understandable instruction. So hopefully you like my teaching style, and if you do, if you're like, yes, I think I can learn from you, well, then you will love my full main math courses. So uh, you can find the links to all of these courses in the description, but they include basic math, pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, pre-calculus, and a ton of specialized test prep math courses. Okay, so again, don't give up if you're having a tough time in math. I can definitely help you out. So you can check out the links to all these courses in the description. So let's get back to the video. So again, the most important thing or one of the most important things about right triangles is that you can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the lengths of a right triangle. Now here we have a right triangle and we have all the lengths. So let's just kind of validate that indeed we have a right triangle. Now the way you use the Pythagorean theorem is that these variables A, B, and C are uh, referencing the sides of the right triangle. Now, the most important variable here is the variable C. All right, so C is always going to be the longest side 
of that right triangle. That's called the hypotenuse, and it's the side opposite of that 90 degrees. Okay, so these other two sides can be A or B. Matter of fact, we'll call this side A, we'll call this side B, but again, the critical side is C, all right? So you have to get C right, and then these other two sides could be A or B. So let's just kind of plug in these values into the Pythagorean theorem so we could see that this works. Okay, so what's A squared? Well, that'd be four squared, right? Because uh, A is four plus B squared. So B is what? That's three, that's three squared. And this uh, is this equal to C squared or five squared? So let's go ahead and check this math. So four squared is 16, 16 plus three squared, three squared is three times three or nine. And then five squared is five times five or 25. And you, can, and you can see that 16 plus nine is indeed 25. 25 is equal to 25. Okay, so this is an illustration of the Pythagorean theorem, but really we wanna use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for uh, lengths of a right triangle. So let's uh, do a few examples. Matter of fact, we'll kind of uh, put our four back here. And let's suppose we had this problem right here. So we have a right triangle. Now, again, you can't use the Pythagorean theorem unless you have a right triangle. So you gotta look at that triangle and then identify, is this a right triangle? If it is, well then now you can think about the Pythagorean theorem. So let's just do this real easy problem right here. So if we're solving for this side, this side right here is the hypotenuse. It's equal to that C side, right? So this would be C. But uh, whether you're using the variable C or X, uh, it really doesn't make a difference because this side and this side will be A and B. So what we need to do is just go ahead and plug in these respective values. So A squared could be four squared. We'll call this side A, and we'll call this side B. So we have four squared plus uh, three squared is equal to X squared or C squared. It doesn't make a difference what variable you use. So now we have four squared, that's 16, plus three squared, that's nine, is equal to x squared. So we have 25 is equal to x squared. So to solve for x, all we have to do is take the square root of both sides. So x is gonna be equal to positive or negative five, but because we are dealing with positive lengths, x is equal to five. And of course, we already knew that this side right here is five. Okay, so that is one example we'll finish up this video by doing one more example. And if you remember everything that I, I talked about in this video about right triangles, well, I'm telling you, you will definitely know a lot in terms of how to solve a lot of different types of uh, not only triangle problems, but this is critical also in uh, trigonometry, right angle trigonometry. All right, so let's uh, solve for this side. We'll put our five back here. So we know the answer for this missing side is four, but let's use the Pythagorean theorem just to see how this works. So remember the critical side is to get that C uh, value identified, right? So that's always going to be the hypotenuse, this side right here. So when we're thinking about A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared, again, you gotta get this C value right. So this side could be B and this side right here could be A. So let's uh, just plug in all this uh, stuff so we can do the algebra. So a squared is going to be what? That'll be x squared plus b squared. That'll be three squared. And that's gonna be equal to c squared, which is five squared. All right, so now we have x squared plus nine is equal to 25. So to solve for x squared, we have to subtract nine from both sides of the equation. So now we have x squared is equal to 16. Okay, so again, a basic quadratic uh, equation. So to solve for x, all we have to do is take the square root of both sides. So x is equal to both positive and negative four. So again, we're gonna take that positive root. So x is equal to a positive four. Of course, we knew that, but I just wanna kinda of show you the algebra here. So these are really the two types of uh, problems that you'll run into when it comes to right triangles. Okay, so hopefully this was a nice quick review of not only right triangles, but other things like the triangle inequality and uh, other properties of the angles in a triangle. So remember, if you need help in uh, math or geometry, just check out my full geometry course in terms of uh, geometry. You can find links to that uh, or links to all these courses in the description of this video. 
All right. So with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.